How you doing, YouTube? I'm Quentin Avery, back for another Bible topic, continuing our series in Ask Questions. Don't forget to click a like or subscribe to the video. Uh, spread the gospel, tell a friend, do what you do. But today we're going to continue our series and ask questions. Today's question is going to be, what is the law? Hopefully you caught part one. This is part two. And what is the law? By definition, it's a system of rules. It's a bunch of do's and don'ts that most people really aren't interested in. A bunch of do's and don'ts that most people don't want to study. Most people don't want to follow. But if you've ever been to church or the house of worship, then you've heard them say, we are not under the law. Well, they don't say it like that. But that means that there is a time in history or the big word that they like to use is dispensation. What does that word mean anyway? It means time. But anyway, they like to use that word. And it means that we have moved from a time period where we are no longer under the law, but we are now under grace. And the scripture that you can use to back up that statement is found in Romans, the sixth chapter, the 14th verse. And it reads, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Whenever you see the word law in the Bible, always ask yourself, which law are you talking about? If you watch the first video, you know what I'm talking about. Now, which law is Paul talking about when he said, for sin shall no longer be your master, for we are not under the law, but we are under grace. Which law will require you to be free from sin? Or like Paul said, which law will require you to, for sin to no longer be your master? Now, within the small three-letter word called law, law, as you know, the law can get very complicated. So, if you saw the last video, then you know that we taught you about covenant law. Covenant law was found in the book of Exodus. And it was called covenant law but it was the Ten Commandment Law, the tablets of stone, engraved or inscribed by the very finger of God. So that was placed on the inside of the ark. The ark is a wooden chest. And so what we read last video was that Moses said, take this law, letting, in, letting us know that he's talking about a particular law, and it was a book that Moses wrote from beginning to end. And he placed that book on the side of the ark. Within that book, we had civil laws. We had ceremonial laws. We had dietary laws. And, and with the moral laws, all given to Moses, because Moses had to go up to the mountain to get those tablets of stone, the law came through Moses. Now, the Apostle Paul, according to Galatians, the third chapter, verse 24 in your King James Version, would call this law a schoolmaster. Now, why would he call it a schoolmaster? Because these laws would educate us and teach us about Jesus and our need for Jesus and our need for God's redemption. These laws didn't have any life-giving power. They didn't have any power to clean us up. Christ had the power, but the law was designed to bring consciousness of sin and show us that we were in a sinful condition. It served as a mirror that can show us where we were wrong at. So, Paul would write in Romans 3 and 20, he said, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sins. So remember, in Romans 3 and 20, always ask yourself, which law are you talking about? When you see the word law, which law are you talking about? Paul was talking about the schoolmaster. And through the law or through the schoolmaster, we become conscious of our sin. Through the law or through the schoolmaster, we can see the reflection of our sinful state through that mirror. And through the law, 
We can see that we are lost, and through the law, we can see that we have fallen, we're fallen creations, and through the law, we can see that we are sinful. And through the law, we can see the need for God's redemption and his amazing grace, amazing grace that saved a wretch like me, amazing grace who was lost, but now I'm found, amazing grace who was blind, but now I see. See, amazing grace, people don't know what the word wretched means. Let me give you a biblical definition of what the word wretched means. It's found in Revelations, the third chapter, verse 17. It says, you say I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and I do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Now, wretched is a state of being that's miserable. A person goes through life and do not realize that they're walking through life. Lost is wretched. Naked, poor, thinking that they have the riches of this world, but they don't have a savior is poor. So wretched, his amazing grace, going through the law, you can find what that amazing grace is about. So this is what the law does. The law, when you go through the law, it, you'll find out it's not about the works of the law because Paul said, rather, it's not about the do's and the don'ts. Rather, you become conscious of sin or you become conscious of what you're doing. Listen to what Paul says in Romans 7 and 7. He says, what shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was if it had not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. By a lack of attention to the law, the tutor, the schoolmaster, by running from the law, by hiding the law, by avoiding the law, by not studying the law, by not reading the law, you will never understand consciousness of sin and why we need redemption. Because that's what the law does. It gives us consciousness of sin. By avoiding the law, by avoiding sin, you avoid looking in the mirror and seeing the state or the sinful state that we are really in not allowing our Messiah to clean us up. Let's revisit Deuteronomy 31, 24. We visited this verse in the last video. It says, after Moses finished writing in a book, the words of this law, from beginning to end, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it besides the Ark of the Covenant of of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you. There it will remain as a witness against you. Understand this, that until you go through the law, till you see your reflection in the mirror in a sinful state, realize that we need to be cleaned up and soap and water is not going to do the job. Then you can realize that you have a need for the schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. But until we go through the law, it's going to remain as a witness against you. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to part three. I don't know about you. I'm going to get right on it. But until the next time, YouTube, see you next time.